Welcome back to the comment section. I'm Brett Cooper. It is not news to any of us here in the comment section family that the body positivity movement has inched its way into every single part of our culture and our society. <laughs> It started with fashion and modeling, and now we've gotten to a point where scientific fact is fat phobia, and influencers are literally asking hotels to widen the hallways for their benefit. And I am being completely serious about that. We did an episode about it last week. I will link it below. So at this point, nothing really surprises me. But I think a recent body positivity tech rollout from Pinterest does warrant another conversation about the topic. Before we get into it though, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to this channel if you have not already, and ring that notification bell so that you never miss a comment section or off the clock episode. All right, so back in September, Pinterest announced that they were rolling out a industry first body type technology to increase body representation on the platform. And this is actually an AI tool. And according to Pinterest, it is a first of its kind technology that uses shape, size, and form to identify identify various body types and over 5 billion images on the platform. Pinterest is leveraging this body type technology and previously launched skin tone technology to shape how its algorithms increase representation across related feeds and search results for women's fashion and wedding related content. These inclusive AI efforts help make Pinterest a more positive place online, a place where everyone can see themselves reflected. For those of you who do not use Pinterest regularly, aka any of the men watching the show, it is a place where most women get their fashion inspiration. I love Pinterest. My mom used to get upset with me when I was like 11 years old because I would take your phone and I would scroll on Pinterest for hours at a time before I had social media. That was like my social media. Anyway, I've loved it forever. It's kind of like the modern day magazine. We use it to plan parties, to pick our nail colors of the month, to put together outfits like what I need to figure out how to style my Tommy John loungewear. We are quickly approaching the holiday season. So this year, why not give the gift of comfort to everybody on your list, including yourself with new Tommy John underwear, loungewear, and pajamas. When you give Tommy John, your loved ones will be so much more comfortable so that they can do everything better. With over 20 million pair sold and thousands of five-star reviews, giving Tommy John is a holiday tradition. And that's why Tommy John doesn't just have customers, they have fanatics. Tommy John's pajamas and loungewear are comfortable enough to use as sleepwear and stylish enough to be seen in during casual evenings out or quick strolls to the coffee shop. And you won't look like you just rolled out of bed even if you did. I personally love Tommy John's, guys. I have been buying their products and supporting this company since way before they were sponsoring the show, so I love having them on board. They're so durable, you can wash them over and over again, and they will just get softer. They're breathable and lightweight. It's truly clothing that moves with you. You will love them as much as I do. I mean, their loungewear has a level of softness that I have never felt before, and it is truly designed to envelop you in a world of pure luxury. Shop Tommy John's fall collection and get 20% off your first purchase at tommyjohn.com slash cooper. Again, that's 20% off at tommyjohn.com slash cooper. Now, the way I was describing Pinterest probably made it sound super girly, but I know men use it too. It is a fantastic tool. It's a fantastic platform. Anyway, unlike Pinterest's skin color search feature, which helps you filter, you know, makeup looks and outfit ideas by skin tones. This is apparently scanning the billions of images on the platform for body sizes in order to create more representation in the algorithm that is fed to you when you go on the Pinterest explore page. So it will be boosting plus size images. Now, like so many of these things, like so many of these movements and these ideologies, it is always a very slippery slope. Because does it really matter to me if plus size women are being served pictures of similar body types on their feeds? No, I think that's fine. I think that's actually very nice. I'm sure it'll be very helpful when styling outfits and trying to pick out clothes that they wanna buy. But then, companies like Pinterest start citing organizations like the NAAFA, the National Association to Advance Fat Acceptance, and they try to make this into a much bigger virtue signaling opportunity versus just rolling out a cool new feature of their platform. Here's another article about this. Pinterest's new algorithms want you to see every body type. And then here's a TikToker that was celebrating it at the time when it came out. Do you know what I would like to see? Inclusive search everywhere. We have the power to redefine what we think is beautiful, strong, healthy, good, worthy. I'm so proud to share that Pinterest is rolling out a new inclusive search and I helped build it. Look at all of the different body types. We love this range. My feed looks so diverse. I'm getting that fall inspo and seeing it on different body types, but also seeing it on bodies that look like mine. Pinterest looks like me and it looks like you too. Now again, to a degree, I think that this is very nice and very good because you would want to go on Pinterest and see models that look like you because you're using it to style yourself and buy clothing and you know find outfits. And I also know the power that social media can have on body image, so I get it. But there needs to be a balance between relatability and not glamorizing an unhealthy body type and lifestyle. Let's not overdo it. But of course, they always start to overdo it. Help me help you.
Now, further on in that article that I was just referencing about this new feature, it starts to highlight some pretty concerning figures, like the fact that according to this article, quote, the average woman in the US wears a size 18. And for many, that size isn't big enough and only going up to a size 18 is so discriminatory and awful and we need to fix that right now because everybody is oppressing these size 18 women. And that is just like absurd. And this is a slippery slope that always seems to occur with these body positivity conversations. It starts with, we just wanna see more everyday women and we wanna see girls who look like us, which is, you know, totally fine. But then it quickly turns into vilifying weight loss and glorifying and even sexualizing medical obesity, which is literally what is happening. There are levels of weight that are scientifically unhealthy. That is not discrimination, that is purely science and fact. And denying that or making it seem like it's something to aspire to is a danger to women and it's a danger to people who fall into those certain categories. And they are promoting it, we know this. I've done countless episodes on this channel where I've talked about people on TikTok who are saying that trying to lose weight and weight loss is inherently fat phobic and also racist because everything's racist for good measure. They've also said that going to the gym and trying to lose weight makes you a right wing extremist. Like they will do anything they can to keep you fat, lazy, and unhealthy. And then you go online and you see headlines like this. Your desire to lose weight is absolutely rooted in fat phobia. And then even worse, you read heartbreaking articles like this one. I felt like I was failing the fat community when I decided to lose weight. That is insane. This author had been struggling with her weight and with diabetes, and her doctor was prescribing her weight loss medication, was trying to get her to lose weight and fix her lifestyle, which is something that she wanted to do, that she knew she needed to do for her life and for her health. But she was so hesitant to get on board, to take that medication, to make these lifestyle changes, because she did not want to betray the fat community. That is not healthy. None of this is healthy. She wrote, it is already complex to be a fat person and want to lose weight for personal reasons. It is even harder to feel that you're failing the fat community because you want to lose weight. This is not a loving and tolerant or healthy community. This is more like a cult, in my opinion, to be completely frank and honest, because they want you to be as unhealthy as possible in order to gain acceptance and be part of the in crowd. And if you dare change your lifestyle or want to feel or look better, you are threatened with shame from stupid, unhappy trolls online. And it really is sad because the body positivity movement used to be a great thing with wonderful intentions. Its goal was to uplift normal, everyday people who did not look like the double zero models that they see on TV or in magazines, but now it has become this incredibly toxic community and movement that is desperate to tear women down and keep them unhealthy, while simultaneously normalizing obesity and changing the facts about what is healthy. At this point, we are basically at the bottom of the slippery slope. Thank you for watching the comment section. If you want to see more videos just like this, make sure to subscribe to this channel, turn on your notifications, like this video, and of course, if you want even more content, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I'm Brett Cooper. See you next time.